Hi, I'm Mike Vandervelden, a product manager at Simba Technologies. Here at Simba, we're often asked to clarify, how do I configure Microsoft Excel to connect to an Oracle database? Let's have a look. First, some background. As you know, Microsoft Excel can connect to many external data sources, including an Oracle database. This involves three different connection layers, and from the top down they are the Office Data Connection, or ODC, the data source name, or DSN, and Oracle's transparent networking substrate, more commonly known as TNS. You'll need to take special care when configuring a data source for a 32-bit client on a 64-bit operating system, and I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to show you a demo, and I encourage you to follow along on your system, pausing and rewinding this video as necessary. We'll start at the lowest level with Oracle's TNS. Oracle's TNS is configured via a text file called tnsnames.ora. This file contains a list of database addresses that specify the host name or IP address where the database resides, the TCP port number where the database will be listening for incoming connections, as well as the Oracle SID or system identifier. You can create this file yourself or, more commonly, it will be provided to you by your IT department where it will contain a list of databases that you're allowed to connect to. You can save this file anywhere locally on your system, but once you've done so, you do need to tell Windows where to find it. There are many ways to do this, but I find the easiest is via a Windows environment variable. This can be set via the Start menu, right-click on Computer, Properties, Advanced System Settings, and environment variables, and here we have it. TNS admin is a user environment variable that specifies the folder where TNS names or resides. Here you see that I've saved it in my documents, my data sources. Now once you've created your TNS names or file and you've told Windows where to find it, you're ready to create a DSN or data source name. To do this, you would go to the start menu, Control Panel, Administrative Tools, and here we see Data Sources, or ODC, ODBC. Now here's where you need to be careful. I am running a 64-bit operating system. This Data Source Administrator will create a data source for a 64-bit client. If you have a 32-bit client on a 64-bit operating system, you need to create an appropriate data source. Here's how to do each. If I right-click on the data source administrator found in the administrative tools and find properties, you will see that the file that we're running is called odbcad32.exe. I've created a shortcut on my desktop to point to the 32-bit ODBC administrator. And I'll click on properties. I'll show them side by side. Note that the 32-bit ODBC administrator is also called odbcad32.exe. The difference is where there's found. The 64-bit ODBC administrator on a 64-bit operating system is found in the C backslash Windows system32 directory. The 32-bit administrator on a 64-bit operating system is found under the C Windows syswow64 directory. Syswow stands for Windows on Windows 64. That's right, the 32-bit administrator is found in the syswow64 directory and the 64-bit administrator is found in the system32 directory. Once you know the bitness of your client, you do need to create the appropriate data source. In my case, I have Excel 2010 32-bit on my system, so I know that I do need to create a data source for a 32-bit client. I'll launch the 32-bit administrator from the shortcut on my desktop. You can create two kinds of DSNs, either a user DSN or a system DSN. A user DSN can be created by anybody on the system, whereas a system DSN can only be created by those who have administrative privileges. For our purposes, either user DSN or system DSN will suffice. So because user DSNs are easier to create, we'll create one of those. I'll click on Add, which will bring up a dialog box with all the database drivers that I have on my system. 
Here I have the Oracle database driver, which I will select. Now here is where we define our DSN. First, it needs a name. It can be anything you want, but I do recommend a descriptive name. The description, again, the description can be anything you like. So let's do something descriptive. Uh, how to create a DSN for Oracle DB. Okay. Now, the TNS service name is the name of one of the entries of your TNS names, the Aura file. Now, you can either remember exactly what you called it, or this handy drop-down will look at your TNS names, the Aura file, and list to you all of the database addresses that you have specified. And here you see the only one I have in my file. I will select it. And I can test my connection. Now the database I have installed is an Oracle database. It's an Oracle OLAP database. It's a sample data set from the Oracle technology network called OLAP Train. And the username is OLAP Train. And now I specify the password. Click OK. And here we are. So now we've created a TNS names that Aura file. We've told Windows where to find it. We've created a DSN that refers to an entry in the TNS names that Aura file. And now we're ready to make a connection. So now I'm going to start my 32-bit client. Oh, and here you can see the DSN I've just created. Now we're ready to start my 32-bit client, which is Office Excel. 2010. To create a connection, I go to data from other sources from data connection wizard. And here we have a dialog box. I select other, advanced, next. Here we have a list of all the database providers available to me. As I mentioned before, I've installed the OLAP train data set that's available for free from the Oracle Technology Network. To access the multi-dimensional OLAP database, I need to use a Simba MDX provider for Oracle OLAP. I will select that now. At this point, I need to tell it where is the data source name. Now you can remember exactly what you typed over this dialog box. We can select the DSN I've just created, which I will do. Again, I need to know, specify the username and password to use to connect to the database. And once I've connected to the database, I do need to specify which schema or catalog to use. This drop-down box will allow me to select from the list of available catalogs. And I've got the OLAP train data set. And we click OK. Now you'll see another dialog box that asks you which cube to access in your schema. And I'm going to connect to the sales cube. Next. Here's the final step. We're now going to save this data connection as a Office data connection file so we can reuse it later. We have to give it a file name. By default it shows you the database name and a cube name, but you may end up having lots of uh, data connection files with similar names. So I suggest using a more descriptive name, video demo. And the same goes for friendly name. In case you have multiple data connection files with similar names. Now I'm going to save my password in the file so that every time I connect I don't have to retype it. If you choose not to save your password in a file, every time you connect to the database you'll need to re-enter your password. And it gives me an appropriate warning. That's good. And I'm always going to use this file to refresh the data so I'm not prompted which cube to use and so forth. Click Finish. And now we have an opportunity to select where the data should appear. This is going to set up a pivot table for me in cell A1. I will click OK. And now you can browse the data in a database. I'll create a quick pivot table showing sales uh, by geography, um, by year, and now you can access the data live in the database with a live connection. I will save this Excel spreadsheet. 
sample sales data. Click save and close. If I now return to my documents, I will launch the spreadsheet and it will be back at exactly the same state that it was when I closed it. And as you see when I drill down, I'll be warned again this is an external data source and after refreshing our connection we're able to drill down into the database. Alternatively, I can just open my data connection, the one I just created, and it will start a blank spreadsheet but with the same connection to the database so I can start a brand new pivot table with a brand new analysis on my data. And we can start again. And sales and quantity by uh, product. Okay, let me sum up. I've shown you that there are three steps necessary to configure Excel to connect to an Oracle database. First, you needed a TNS names that or a file, either creating the file yourself or using the one that's supplied to you by your IT department. Next, you need to tell Windows where to find this file using a Windows environment variable called TNS admin. Next, you create a data source name or DSN, and you have to be careful of the bitness of both the operating system and the client that's going to use the data source. Finally, you created an office data connection, and you save the file locally, which you can then share with your colleagues. For more information, including white papers, product information, and manuals, please see our website. And thank you for watching.